Unbelievable. And we're streaming. <laughs> Just another day around here when nothing goes right. <laughs> Sorry, folks. That was crazy. Hi, Butch. Don't know. I, Lori, Sylvia, Shiacross. I'll say hi to everybody. We're live streaming on YouTube. We usually do it every night around. And... Let me see if it's a streamer. <laughs> there you go. That's good. I changed the settings again and I got kicked off just as I tried to come online. That's why it was an extra minute. Hi, Brian. Hi, Rinnerell. Sylvia, Lori, Stetson, uh, Delena, Aunt Jester, Sydney, Craig, Stetson, Char. Dude, holy cow, missing sky. Hi, James. Anybody don't know what's going on? I'd like to say hi as the stream's warming up. It's a live stream on YouTube. There's going to be a stream tomorrow morning uh, around 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Canada time. I'll be posting another video shortly before it at about five minutes long. And that's got to do with electric uh, scooter. And I'll cover all that tomorrow morning, but I just want to make sure everybody's aware. They'll see that pop up, a five or six minute video. And then you'll see a two hour preamble to a live stream. And it's going to be worth catching. We're going to do something out here in the garden with malls, nine pound malls. I'm not going to give it away yet, but uh, it's going to make for a good video anyway, because we're pretty frustrated. So we'll explain all that tomorrow morning. And just so you can keep your eyes open for that. We got Missing Sky. Hi, Missing Sky. Uh, Craig Ketzer. Angela. Hi, Angela. Aqua. Uh, Miss Frill. The senior articles. Um, Jester. Kate. I'm still off my game here. Fix it, stupid. Yeah, I hear you. DC. Lunar. Did I miss anybody? Ken. David. Bubba, woo, almost there. How long have I been streaming? Two minutes, 26 seconds. Pfft. Usually takes me five minutes to warm up. The conversation is on the left-hand side of the screen. We are live streaming. Everything looks good. Let me go back over to the original window. And the topic today is Fukushima has destroyed Japan. Right from one end all the way to the other. From east to west to north to south. The country is polluted. 100% of the country. And so the levels right across the country are higher than Chernobyl's exclusion zones. Let's put it that way. I'm working on the documentary today. Um, got the first 15 minutes finished, which was the hard stuff. And it took two hours to render. But I finally got all that in order. That's uh, 15 minutes of covering the initial event the detonations, uh, unit one to six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it's really good. Finally, we're gonna, the whole picture is coming out and it's actually gonna be better than I was hoping. So that's something to look forward to. Um, after tomorrow's live stream, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., it's uh, 6 p.m. British Columbia time right now, in case anybody's wondering. And the stream is an hour long and then it'll pop back up 20 minutes later and uh, the NSA and everybody else will put blocks on it and mess with it. We have been under attack on this site now, which no big surprise, right? It's not a big surprise for anybody, I, I would imagine. I'm hammering all their staples out there. I'm putting coffin nails in them and they can't sit by and watch that happen. So they brought in some talent to come after me. And that's just the way it is. We know that was going to happen. I'm going to get censored. My numbers are going to go down. I lost half of my live views overnight. Uh, so half the people are not getting my subscriptions, obviously. I was averaging 600 to 700 because you got the analytical inside will show up on the live stream each night. And that's been going on for three months. Six, seven, uh, never under 500. And then overnight, uh, a few days back, it dropped down to 200 on a live stream. And 
everybody knows what's going on here is that we're destroying their narrative and they're using uh, you know they're using companies now to censor us of course the military there's two million industries depending upon nuclear material to make their monies there's all the universities institutions the vultures of society and they get their funding directly from the nuclear industry well, they get their orders from the nuclear industry. They get most, almost, if not all of their monies, all their equipment, their schools and everything else are paid for by the taxpayers. And so we, we expect them to come after us uh, as a badge of honor. But, you know, it does uh, cause issues. And it does cause grief for everybody. Hi, Janet. Uh, Mr. Hemme, just passing through. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, just passing through. Uh, Kevin O'Kane, it's like old time pirate radio. Thank you. Fix it. Uh, the, uh, let me see. Standing foot. We got Pippin. There you go. I think I got everybody that time. My name is Dana Durnford, by the way. If anybody, I know I get a lot of messages. I can't answer everybody, so I guess each night I'll have to start off the show by saying, "Hi, I'm Dana Durnford." <laughs> Whatever. But a lot of people are really uh, torturing me and I just spend so much of my messaging telling them who I am I'm just tired of it so I think every night now I'll just start off the video hi I'm Dana Durnford <laughs> five foot eight 160 pounds <laughs> I like white colors headphones I like scratching the ears on my doggy I'll just start off every show like that I guess but uh, you know, I wanted to come out and because I've been working so hard to get this out there because I understand that the whole picture is the only video uh, that is missing, right? Everybody that, has that same issue where we can't get the whole pictures. And that's why the title of the video to me makes sense. But to everybody else who don't know any better, right, you know, they need all that information in a nice package so they can come to grips with it, come to terms with it, so they can understand it, so they can, they didn't, all the lies will ricochet off them, right? That's what I'm trying to do for you folks. Put you in a position where all the lies will ricochet off you. And just to give you a taste of what's coming, let's go into the files and give you some uh, previews that, uh, match up to the Northern Hemisphere, the Pacific Ocean, and Japan, uh, so that you can have a forecast map of radioactive cloud. And so this is a little bit random. Forecast map of radioactive cloud showed threat to the U.S. West Coast. That was March the 16th. The Belgian Institute for Space, March the 15th. And the simulated forecast only accounts for a single release event, not a combination of all radioactive releases. Um, and so governments, you know, right away were doing simulations of the dispersal from what they knew, right? And so the initial radiation releases were based upon Unit 1, which was the first to go, appropriately. And Unit 1 is... Uh, three times bigger than Chernobyl and it's 100% meltdown and Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. The cores went through the reactor and down through 36 inches of cement. The cores are actually really poorly designed and everybody's probably aware of that but those who are not, that's an important thing to know. And when I do the live uh, or the, the hour and a half documentary on about Fukushima, I'm not sure what to call it. You guys can put suggestions there. I was thinking uh, Fukushima had a full picture, or Fukushima, the entire story. And I cover everything for Fukushima, the Pacific, the jet streams, and North America. So that's Canada, United States, and Mexico a bit. And, you know, we still got to go down the road of all the other Pacific countries, right? Top U.S. official on March 18, 2011, raises the possibility of widespread nuclear fallout just caused by a spent fuel pool. And if anybody's not familiar with that terminology, the spent fuel pools 
were put on top of the reactor buildings. So if the reactors ever had an issue, you can never get to the spent fuels. Most likely they would suffer an event. In Fukushima, of course, that came true. Unit 1 and Unit 3 are missing their fuel pools, and each fuel pool had 122,000 rods, 80 in a bundle, 1,535 bundles in a pool, and one of those rods is enough to kill all the humans on the planet after it kills all the mammals. 122,000 of them, 12 foot long, are missing just out of the single pool, but once again, there was around four or five stories and up to six stories on each of the buildings that detonated that had pools. And that's where they kept all the pools to. And so I'm not sure what the number really is, but I think it's, we can safely say it's six pools. So 700,000, 720,000 rods and one rod that has probably been atomized, a lot of that. Error salt and went up into the jet streams. We have a record of the dispersals into the plumes that went up five miles and another record of plumes going up nine miles. And so the jet stream would carry that across the Pacific Ocean in North America. Uh, depending on how fast the streams were going, they can go up to 400 miles an hour. But at 100 miles an hour, it would be about two and a half days to reach the coastline of Canada. 72 hours, they would cover most of North America. And Americans' dispersal models for uh, CC-137 showed the entire northern hemisphere under a blanket a cesium in high altitudes also raining out uh, in a 40-day period rather where the whole northern hemisphere is totally covered in a blanket and then of course that will rain out because it's up high and these particles and particulates and radioactive atoms and uh, can stay up there for up to 10 years but they will rain out the entire time and a gram, a gram of Cesium-137, for instance, would produce more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands on all the beaches on the planet. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of rods that are 12 feet long, that are stuffed with uranium and plutonium pellets, that are made from uh, old nuclear weapons. So this is not like a first-run chain reaction scenario. And every chain reaction doubles by millions the toxicity of uh, the combination that they're using. So it becomes more uh, two million times more radioactive. And that's why Unit 3 uh, gets the most uh, attention from, from all the mainstream media that is two million times worse than any other reactor on planet Earth. Well, once again... That would make it 18 million times worse than Chernobyl because it's three times the size, not counting the fuel pools. That's just as bad as a melted reactor, if not worse, because it's already been through the chain reactions. And now it's a very volatile, a very carcinogenic. And having it atomized to the micron sizes to the one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter uh, is easily ingestible. And because the places like California has seen 1,500 buckyballs for cubic meter of air, which are the radioactive atoms being ingested into a, a urethal peroxide sulfur base, like a soccer ball, where it has all it's able to, to hold its spherical shape. And so the uranium or strontium or cesium or plutoniums or iodine or any of the isotopes or radioactive particles can get inside of these little tiny microscopic buckyballs and they become like little nuclear engines. They don't become solutable in water. They have this unusual phenomenon. There's a link below about that to a peer review study. It's a very strange phenomenon, but you ended up with uh, extraordinary, not only is it because it's max fuel two million times more dangerous but because they sprayed the salt water on it. These balls will liberate themselves repeatedly. They can float around your house like fine dust would float around your house. California was seeing 1,500 of those. And so you just, they don't just get out of your way when you're walking down the street. And so these cancers will show up over the next couple of years dramatically. And you can see the World Health Organization said, oh, there's going to be an increase of cancer from sugar, right, and cigarettes or something like that. And it's a little earlier in the day, some more people are going to go. <clears throat> now, California has seen 20 million 
of these radioactive particles per liter, per liter. And if you're walking around in that, you're going to ingest it. It's not, it's not going to drop you, most people, dead on the ground. High levels are, are cesium, and they came in high enough levels to kill people. I'm not saying it didn't. I'm just saying you won't see a whole bunch of people falling down, hopefully, from stuff like that. Um, to, you know, it's got a lot to do with cancer doesn't grow overnight. But if you get it in your heart, a week later, you, you could easily uh, die. And a lot of people have. I mean, up to 20,000 people after Fukushima in America, extra people were dying of uh, uh, cardiac arrest. And um, I can't remember. But there was a couple of studies that were updated. These, these were actual university studies showing an increase. There was an increase of baby deaths in British Columbia uh, right after Fukushima. For the first 14 weeks after Fukushima, huge increase. And so, what they tell you a lot is the iodine uh, was uh, 300 times insignificant background radiation level. Do you, you, you get any idea how strange that conversation really is? Because iodine 131, which can't exist without iodine 129, but it can't exist without iodine 132, which you ingest into your thyroid nine times more effectively, and it can't exist without iodine 133. Now, iodine 133, 132 might only have like a three-day half-life, two-day half-life, respectively, but that's times 10. They break down in halves and quarters and everything else into other radioactive isotopes before they lose their their energy. But they're produced heavily in the rods as a byproduct of uranium plutonium, like cesium also is the same thing as strontium. And wherever there was strontium, there was 30, or cesium, there was 137, there was also 134, of course. This stuff doesn't travel alone and it doesn't separate and go its own way. And, well, it does that in a tank. Like in the dive tanks, gas will separate themselves, right? But that's a whole different story. And then wherever you got the cesium-137, 134, or any of this, there's going to be 30 times more strontium-90. Strontium-90 goes right into the bones, leukemias, autoimmune deficiencies, diseases. And also goes into your muscles. The cesium goes into your heart, likes to sequester in your organs. Living in an environment with 50 becquels of background radiation is known um, of this kind of radiation is known because this is different than the potassium 40 that all the lap dogs, the bootlick and cheerleading machine out there are talking about. That has nothing to do with the conversation. Once again, if I eat a banana with 12 becquels of potassium 40, I off gas automatically through uh, like a, a, a thermostat regulates the temperature. Your body regulates the intake and the capacity of what you can carry of potassium-40. And so you'll hear them talking about, uh, you know, they'll mix in how you can have 7,000 or 8,000 becquels of potassium-40 in your drinking water, but you're only going to get around a couple of hundred becquels of cesium. Well, if you drink... Right? And you see how they mix it? And if you drink uh, 9,000 becquels of cesium-137, kill you. Potassium-40, you just off-gas it because your body can only hold so much potassium-40. It's insignificant. It's indigenous. It's been here since the beginning of time. Everything on this planet is acclimated to it. It's got nothing to do with equals MC squared. It's got nothing to do with Fukushima radiation. Outside of the point that it's used to muddle the water, to distort the implications, and to create ex exasperation of people that are saying, you know, this is a lot of radiation. Go ahead, you know, there's 9,000 becquels of potassium-40 in your water. You're off gassing 4,400 becquels all the time. But if you had 4,400 becquels of uh, cesium or strontium or uranium, by the way, the reactors run on plutonium and uranium, the byproducts of these stuff. And so they were atomized. There were three reactors atomized down there. Just five or six pools that are missing with 100 plus thousand rods in each pool. Lots of this was atomized. Let me keep going. Is uh, Fukushima's radiation plume highly dispersed before it hits the U.S. West Coast? Watch the latest forecast from Norway. And that's the Norwegian Institute for Air Research. And uh, this was from uh, 22nd to the 22nd to the 27th. 
But the American government's created their own CCM-137 model showing a dispersal covering the entire North American uh, Northern Hemisphere, Canada included, Mexico. Northern Hemisphere. With a blanket of just CCM-137 and iodine-131, which they say has an eight-day half-life, but of course has an 80-day half-life because everything is times 10. And so the lies are shocking. They're after lying consistently, constantly, relentlessly thrown into the equation potassium-40 because they don't want you to understand the equations. Right? So they've been doing this all the time. So why are they doing that all the time? It's because they've been releasing it all the time. They've been firing it into poor people's countries like Iraq and Afghanistan, Somalia. They threw it off the coast. They dump it into your oceans. Britain got 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging into its ocean and sell a field. And that's not running over the hot coriums, at least we hope not. Apparently it's not. And they had a release there a couple of weeks ago, and they said, oh, it's just natural radon. Like you would actually find natural radon amongst all the contamination on a nuclear waste site. How can you go to a nuclear waste site and try to blame everything on natural radon, which is insignificant? There's not even a single person a year that dies of radon, period natural radon it's the most ludicrous thing imaginable the west coast of north america under threat from fukushima spent fuel a global crisis and seriousness of it cannot be overstated the government thinks canadians can't handle the truth uh john gleason august 16 2013 canada is full of radiation too like the entire northern hemisphere got hammered <coughs> and you know there is no viable solution for either management or disposal of radioactive material that was Kevin Camps he's a radioactive waste specialist they can't build a containment to contain it and they lie they show you pictures and lie but they're trying to get you calm out they dump it in the ground it's 450 million gallons dumped directly into the soil at Hanford in um, 50s and 60s and then because they can't contain it but their license says that they put it in a sarcophagus but if you go look you find out they dump 450 billion gallons directly into the soil and that they have 41 miles of open pit and people don't go down there without don't go close to it without the huge massive suits on you can't get in there and pick up some of this stuff okay you don't you know, your body falls down, no one can come get it. The lawyers and the machine out there are saying, oh, no, I can go ahead and play with that. Well, you should, you know, they'll hire you. Go go, go ask them for a job and tell them that they'll hire you. Hell, Fukushima will take you. Fukushima will take you, man. You can go down and explore all over Fukushima, you what? They got no problem with you. Send us your dead. Send us people who wants to die. That was a headline from those uh, creatures. Uh, let me go. The radiation forecast in Japan was kept secret to avoid panic in the whole of society. There was 5,000, they done 5,000 models in the first 52 days around 96, I think it was. We've done a video about that. We only cover uh, the reality that, the, you know, we don't make anything up. We don't need to exaggerate anything. You can't make this stuff up. You can't exaggerate it. And just uh, radiation and illnesses. Top cancer doctor. Nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. Uh, June 5, 2011. And let me come back to my page here because I'm blah for 24 minutes. Yeah, it kills all the flora and the fauna on your coastlines and your communities. Hi, Rebram. Zig, uh, zip free. Heal them up. I got seven down already. Well, I'm doing good tonight. Uh, the cowards are in full steam here tonight. Right? They can't uh, debate me. They can't debunk me. Or they would have. They'd be destroying me left, right, and center. And why would I do something like that? Why would I make stuff up? Um, you know, why can't we have a debate? Why do they make stuff up? 
What do they lie constantly? Why have, do they have to manipulate constantly? Why do they got to deceive everybody constantly? Why do people like Jay Cullen from University of Victoria, British Columbia say that getting Fukushima radiation is like getting an x-ray. If you ingest radiation, you don't get it. Any. You get an x-ray, it goes through you, and but you don't get isotopes into you or radiation uh, atoms or particles into you. And so the, the health complications from an x-ray has no part of this equation. This is a completely different monster ingesting radioactive isotopes. Um, Hi, Jim Han. Nuclear waste at a Hanford, yeah. Sergeant York, uh, Pepin, Reram. I say hi to everybody. Hi, Tree. Mr. Hemi again, EF Spider. Janet, Standing Foot. Let me see. Did I miss anybody? Uh, Delena. Lori. Yeah, ba, ba, ba. Let me keep going. Looks like everything is going good, right? Stream's running good. I'll just open up that window for one second. And hopefully it doesn't destroy this stream. Let me get rid of that. Oh, yeah, it looks good. I got eight thumbs down already. Woo! Dana rocks! <laughs> eight thumbs down. Naughty little devils. So why are they attacking me now? I've been doing this for 90 odd days. They can't debunk me. They can't come out and attack me. It's the seven silent douchebags, Delina says. <laughs> Let me keep going. Got them on a rock. Got them on a roll. Uh, New Goodard's journals. Landmark study presents strong evidence today that cancer risk not only exists at low doses of radiation, but maybe even greater per unit of dose than at higher doses. Right? Once again, you're ingesting it. You're, you're living in the radiate environment of, you know, nuclear waste. Disinformation by nuclear proponents tries to confuse the public about the effects of external and internal radiation. Uh, nuclear apologists play shoot the messenger on radiation. So the, pers uh, the first piece of disinformation is to confuse the effects of external and internal radiation, right? Internal radiation is a trillion times worse and external radiation. Don't get me wrong, external radiation is definitely bad. You get it on your hands, you put your hands in your mouth or in your eyes. That's what children do, right? So if they're out playing in the grass with these radioactive buckyballs, I mean, there was 40 million becquels of iodine 131 off the coastline of California. 40 million? Just in a single bed of kelp? And that's because the radioactive iodine washed out in community because there's only been a drought there for two years, right? And that was before the drought. And so rain is washing it back out into the ocean. And, and then, of course, the kelp, it'll hang out in that because that's a natural con conduit for it, right? And so you can expect to see... That's extraordinary. Yeah, kelp got iodine, but it doesn't have iodine-131. And you can't even look for iodine-129, which got a 15 million year half-life. The iodine-132 and 133, there was a lot more of that because that's the byproduct of nuclear power and then them being released in the detonations, right? Three melted cores that never stopped hemorrhaging, folks. And I'm putting together 360 headlines, the whole picture, the whole bloody picture. I got it. It's really good. Uh, it'll be a year before I got to update that one. And, you know, that'll finally give everybody the entire picture. It's fantastic. It's an amazing amount of work. I didn't think I could pull it off to tell you the truth, but today I feel like I can actually pull it off. That'll be okay. Last night I was like, oh, no, it's probably be a little rough. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's still be a little rough because it's a very difficult thing to do to get 360 headlines and get them into context and tell a story. It's crazy. But it's very cool because you can't escape. No matter how much denial you are, yeah, four or five of them might be questionable. The other 356 are crazy stuff because I only took the best. And I got so much. Not just cancer, but how low doses of radiation cause heart disease and stroke. Low doses of radiation causes heart disease. A mathematical model constructed by researchers at Imperial College London predicts the risk of cardiovascular diseases, heart attacks and strokes associated with low background levels of 
nuclear power or radiation. Not bananas. I can fill the room up with bananas. Not going to hurt me unless I fall and land on one in the wrong way. I might already all fall on me. I might get hurt. I'm not going to get cancer. But if I took one chunk of uranium plutonium rods the size of a banana, I can't finish that sentence. It destroys you. It'll melt your organs being that close to it. I couldn't have it in the same room. It would fill the building up with isotopes and everything in the building would become radioactive. Right? It's a very, very... Uh, that's why it's supposed to be locked up in a sarcophagus till the end of time. Right? They don't can't build a sarcophagus so they throw it in the ocean till the end of time hoping the ocean will hide it. Well, that's come back to roost 10,000 million times full now because it's hemorrhaging out of Fukushima reactors constantly, nonstop, every friggin' day. They're telling you 300 tons, oh, maybe 400 tons of radioactive isotopes. The rods detonated all over that site, and which we're going to cover in that full uh, mini documentary, full documentary that's coming up. So the detonations of the pools, blew chunks of the rods also all over the site. Lots of it got atomized, but lots of it went all over the site. Concussions were felt 25 miles, kilometers away by AP reporters. Um, you got to think about these rods. They put out the neutrons and the x-rays. They split the atoms. They're creating their own isotopes. They're on hinge. We've never had this event on our planet That's before. Chernobyl was close to something like this, but Chernobyl is just a sneeze compared to this. Chernobyl, they went up on the roofs for 15 seconds originally for a long time. There's a link below, 3828, I believe is the name of the video. It's a documentary from Chernobyl photographer who went in with uh, 600,000 soldiers and took pictures. And they went out with each crew and took pictures of them running out the rest of the way. They would pick up a little tiny piece with a little coal shovel, you know, a little the old fashioned coal shovels. Because if you pick up too much, that close proximity to the X-rays and, and uh, to the X-rays and the neutrons uh, would be overload as it is. You're running across eight or ten thousand Rankins when 500 Rankins will kill you within a couple of weeks being exposed to it for a tiny t period of time. And so Chernobyl's uh, heroes and victims, 600,000 recognized, got medals. Uh, the first couple of thousand ran out in the roof. Picked up pieces, went over and threw it over the roof, went home, never went back to Chernobyl or a nuclear site again. And nobody knows what happened to them after that. But you can imagine going out there. They're only supposed to be out there 15 or 20 seconds. They probably ended up out there 35 or 40 and run like the wind across all these hot rods. If someone told you to do that, you would turn around and run the other way. Anybody in their right mind would. These people didn't know what they were doing. The majority of them had no idea. Some of them certainly had to. But the majority apparently didn't. In Fukushima, they're using the homeless, the most uh, vulnerable of society, the people that have already been victimized by the system, by the cruel, inhumane system that's there constantly, their entire existence. The Americans exasperated that by dropping a nuclear weapon on their society and then taking over their country and allowing the mafia to run the show the Fukushima nuclear military industrial complex cover story is a power plant. It's to make directed energy weapons, isotopes, all directed energy weapons, all lasers are dependent upon exotic isotopes and that have to be replenished to use up these isotopes in a short period of time. It's one of the most, it doesn't mean that it's depleted, it just means it's no good for shooting lasers with or directed energy weapons with anymore. The entire future is based upon lasers and directed energy weapons from military industrial complexes, uh, nuclear power plants, which is a byproduct of making an isotopes because the reactors are a million gallons a minute to cool them down. You might as well make money. It's a good cover story. All those fuel pools, right, is where they take all the rods, you put it in a pool for the next 30 years to get them to cool down and to control the neutrons. Well, they, they uh, evaporate the water in those 30-foot by 50-foot pools, by 30-foot deep. And that water is released into the environment containing all kinds of isotopes. So every community with a nuclear power plant has radioactive rain around it. There's a huge increase of cancers now in studies around all nuclear power plants, particularly in children. 
It attacks uh, b uh, young girls 10 to 100 times worse than young boys. It attacks children. Their organs are much more susceptible per doses compared to the adult. The adult don't know nothing. You know, they can they can take quite a bit. The child can't take jack. Their organs uh, will be damaged immediately. And children are closer to the ground. And every time it rains, of course, you liberate a lot of these urethal peroxide sulfur bulky balls. And there's links below about that. It's a very complicated thing, but it's a very important part of the equation, something we can't leave out, something we can never forget about, something that they can never marginalize, and something that changes the game. Because each one of these little bulky balls that are on like two microns, so you know, trying to get respirators or something to, to uh, stop that is almost impossible. Is impossible actually, if I remember correctly, without spending just extraordinary amounts of money, and it's just a temporary solution. Is liberated to the communities, and so we have to do stuff like put uh, nutrition back into our genetically modified foods. They took all the nutrition out of it, all the potassium, the magnesium. The calcium, the cobalt, the carbons, uh, all the nutrients, all the minerals, any food, and you put in five toxins that are carcinogens and that your food never had before, and that makes your autoimmune vulnerable as it is. I mean, I got a long laundry list of the vulnerabilities we have in our society because of corporate personhood and corporations with human rights, but the Fukushima is the biggest one. It's the most scariest one. It's the most threatening one. It's the most immediate, long-term, sustained one. It's killing the Pacific Ocean at an unprecedented rate. The radioactive isotope, a single isotope in a glass of water, salt water from the ocean, for instance, and 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are the very basis of the food chain. There's probably a trillion other creatures in that glass of water. From the ocean but 75 to 100 million of them are phytoplankton and if i drop an isotope in there it'll kill them all everything not just the phytoplankton which are the basis of the food chain and creates the oxygen 50 percent of the oxygen on the planet but it kills all the other critters so it's got no oxygen no critters if you dump that in you can keep doing that till the end of time and that isotope will keep killing away whatever lifespan it's got right and so can you imagine filling the ocean up with these creatures these these monsters and the damage and the carnage they do because they disperse out you can't delude them they don't delude that's that's the trick it's like potassium 40. oh you know you got 4400 becquels um decaying in your body right now you know if that was the case all bodies would be on a nuclear waste site if that stuff was bad it's not that's normal that's natural everything on the planet is like that Right, you can't put any more potassium 40 than is what um, the laws of physics have already assigned, right? The natural laws of physics have already assigned to that product, right? That's how the, uh, we have evolved. Everything on this planet is in, and that's where some of the mutations come from these low, very you know, over millenniums. So, everything up till about you know, 100 years ago was the genetic superior selection of species on this planet through evolution, through uh, the, you know, the bodies, the, the animals, the creatures, the environments, adaptation, they're the best suited, they learn to adapt, they reproduce, they're sustainable, they have ecosystems, food, they're self. And so we changed, there's nothing out there now with its original DNA. There's nothing out there now because not only the GMO, not only because of all the toxins released into the environment, not only because of uh, the carnage upon this planet through the wars, through the release of radioactive materials, through the testing, through Iraq and Afghanistan at 2.5 million uh, dirty bombs a month, every month, at a 5 million bullets, they fired 5.5 million bullets actually a month in Iraq and Afghanistan for nine years. Half of those came from McAllister's bomb manufacturing facility in Oklahoma, and they only make depleted uranium rounds. That's it. And so each one of these bullets, each one of these bombs, is a dirty bomb. The A-10 Warthog shoots only dirty bombs. It shoots a ton and a half a minute. That's the animosity equivalent of 71 Nagasaki bombs, a uranium, dirty bombs, rather, a minute, or the animosity equivalent of 71 Nagasaki bombs, radiation released into the environment. And remember, as those bullets are going through the air, they're catching fire, they're for plastic 
they catch fire and they're releasing the radioactive atoms at supersonic speeds across the trajectory of where they're headed for. And so it's all radioactive atoms, the entire friggin' country, when it hits its target, the radioactive material, uranium-238, it's contaminated with americium, it's contaminated with plutonium, it's contaminated with all the byproducts of nuclear production, nuclear refinement, nuclear enrichment. That's supposed to be in the sarcophagus until the end of time. That's what they tell you. Oh, no, we're going to put it in the sarcophagus until the end of time. And they release, because they're chunks also, not only is, as it burns off, it's releasing all these radioactive atoms and particles, the uranium-238 got a half-life of 4.5 billion years. You're at war with Iraq and Afghanistan until the end of the fucking time. But the children are they're playing in that stuff. But once again, Fallujah, 70 to 80% of the children are born don't look like humans, depending upon uh, their loved ones until the end of time. And they're born without a, a totally dysfunctional because of the uranium-238 by Britain and America. Once again... The A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half of uranium-238 a minute. So 71 Nagasaki bombs a minute. Against family homes and family cars, hospitals, distribution centers, farmland, everything is contaminated there. And so those you liberate those isotopes all the time through evaporation, through storms and everything else, and they show up all around the world within a year. And so, but they're also released into the environment and they're supposed to be locked up till the end of time, according to the NRC. And so I went off on that rant on how low doses of radiation cause heart disease and strokes. Cesium-137, once again, travels with 30 times more strontium-90. And it can't travel without some uranium, some plutonium, lots of iodine-131, 129, 132, 133. It's never just a simple insignificant isotopes got right that's how they lie to you and manipulate you and deceive you and trick you and pacify you and murder you right they keep you stupid and then they feed you gmo because all your supplements now are gmo your baby food is gmo your pet food is all gmo your pharmaceuticals are all gmo it's got no minerals got no nutrients right they're, they're, they're attacking us from every front the epa the Environmental Protection Agency grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals with no environmental human impact studies. Look at all, look at all of it up, man. Look up anything I'm saying. Look, look it up. You can give me all the thumbs down you want. That don't mean I'm gonna go away. It just shows me I'm winning. It's sad that people like that can exist. Uh, but you know we know it's true because look at what they're doing on this planet. Look what they've done. Look at the history. Of just a few and look at the wishes of the minis who who understand and have been speaking out for a lot longer than I have mind you I've been talking about depleted uranium for a good seven years I throw it out there all the time and I I'm I uh, you know I, I don't toss names around uh, I'm just telling you facts right I'm not I'm educating you that's all I'm trying to do for you I'm trying to give you another narrative that's hid away from you and that's easy to find if you know how to look or you got a concept and that is a wake-up call for you it's an emergency call for me it's a call to uh because this planet is in heart attack mode uh, the pacific ocean is destroyed as we speak and we can deny it for another year or two i guess but you can't deny what happened to the philippines and you can't deny Tonga, where we had the biggest winds on the planet that we've never seen before. The Philippines was a 100-mile wide F4 tornado. Look up F4 tornado. And then look at the Philippines, 100-mile wide. I got a video link below. And 195-mile-an-hour uh, sustained winds, 225-mile-an-hour gust. 150-mile-an-hour is enough to terrorize you till the end of time. Just that one experience. What is a 195 mile an hour wind going to do? You know, the air becomes projectiles. Those typhoons converged on Japan, picked up all the radioactive isotopes, picking up the millions of becquels in the ocean itself all along the coastline that they try to hide and marginalize that I cover extensively in a new documentary coming out on this site in a few days. 
We're almost past uh, school and stuff. Like I say, tomorrow morning I'll be coming out with a very... To me, it's an important video. To me, it's my freedom. Uh, to me, I need... You know, I have a brand new vehicle and I can't use it. And I'm being accused of things that are unconscionable. And so the more we're going to put that to rest very right, finally, and I can move on, hopefully, or we'll just get another one. But, we, you know, they're doing it to other people, right? That's the whole problem. They're doing this game to everybody. And I could be selfish and get it solved, or I can come out and expose it for what it is and deal with the blowback. And that's what I do. I deal with the blowback. I don't care. Child's risk of cancer from radiation is 10 to 100 times higher than an adult who had the same exposure. Right? Because an adult is much bigger. A child doesn't even have any say in the matter. Right? So, like, they play in the grass. Right? They're, they're always kicking in uh, puddles of water where the stuff gathers up. You know, when it's raining, the isotopes are being re-liberated. The radioactive particles, the radioactive atoms, particularly the urethal peroxide sulfur buckyballs. I mean, we have to come to grips with this. We have to deal with this. And once again, let me go back to the Philippines for a second. Philippines was an F4 tornado. 195 mile an hour sustained from one right through. 44 provinces gone. 15 million people we know about affected directly. Lost everything. But that's not the point. Even though it's an extraordinarily uh, important part of the point. The point is that that happened. That we went from a quarter mile F4 tornado to a 100 mile F4 tornado plus overnight. An F4 tornado is extraordinarily rare. It's usually maybe a quarter mile wide, travels six miles, lasts a couple of seconds over your head. The Philippines was four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Go out and look up tornado survivor videos and listen to their story and imagine what that story would be like if it was four hours of wind. If it was 195 mile an hour of winds. Radiation is energy. It's pure energy. It doesn't stop. It's pumping, it's pumping out that energy. That's what created that storm. I have no doubt about that. Yes, for me, that's a conjecture. I get it. But you can't disprove it. All you can prove is that radiation has an amazing amount of energy. If it's picked up in huge volumes in a storm, the possibility of it turning into a superstorm makes sense. If you had a storm coming over hot water, picks up all that hot water, it gets more powerful. What the fuck do you think radiation does? The rods were put in the pool in the first place because they're so friggin' hot. They have to stay there for 30 years. They boil the pools off. They release the radioactive isotopes in your community as they fill it up with more water. And they never tell you they equate everything with potassium-40, which has nothing to do with equals MC square, which is an outright fabrication and is uh, murder in the first degree because people are paying for this. People uh, expect them to tell the truth. They're yelling fire in a theater and they're murdering people and they're getting away with it. And they, they're not even a nuclear scientist. You know, I might have give, uh, I might have give Washington Street Journal a hard time they raised the radiation levels for residents to get iodine pills. This was the story after meltdown. 75 times higher than the World Health Organization recommends for children. That's what the Americans done, right? Or Japan done. They raised the level of iodine before you take iodine to 75 times above it as soon as the accident happened. And so they denied everybody the ability to just cheat that part of it. Because iodine fills up your thyroid glands with natural iodine. And then radioactive iodine, apparently, who knows if that's true, can't fill that up too. But that's huge. That's huge. So why would they raise the acceptable rate 75 times? And who the fuck are they to do that anyway? And why ain't they swinging from poles in the streets? Because PR firms pro-nuclear universities, pro-nuclear think tanks like uh, University of British Columbia, J. McJ Cullen, and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institutions 
Ken Busler, and like all the other people I cover here, Kevin Kemp, K-E-M-M, not P now, but K-E-M-M from South Africa I covered a couple of nights ago, is different, Kem, I pronounced it wrong that time, Kevin Kemp is really good, uh, Kevin Kem, K-E-M from South Africa, and I done a video a few days ago about that guy, he said there was no accident at Fukushima, nobody got hurt, there was no property lost, there was no damage, there was nobody getting sick, there was nobody with radiation sickness, and therefore there could be no harm to anybody else or anything else. That was in 2013, he wrote that article in October. I mean, it's an outrageous lie, but he's one of the big shots in Austra in Africa about nuclear. He's out giving lectures to your children all the time. He's out doing radio interviews all the time. And these are the lies that he tell. Why can't we uh, legally, you know, lynch people like that? If a thousand people showed up to the meeting and lynches them, and the police show up and said, who done it? And we said, we did. That's common. It's clear that low-level contamination is probably more dangerous than a single dose. Grasshoppers with deformed wings, gray eyes, not red. Birds with abnormal sperm, strange large tumors. Right? And that's another thing we always forget to mention is radiation castrates everybody, men and women. Like it, you can't, um, it neuters everybody. That's what they're doing right now with the flies, right, down in Africa, is they're radiating the flies so they can't have babies, and then they send them out to mate with the, the flies down there. And But, I mean, that's how they do it, right? Low-level radiation on the flies, they can't have babies. They can't produce sperm that can have babies. Well, that's what all the radiation is doing to us, right? Not only the GMO, there's a link below about DCA. It's a natural mineral. It's a natural mineral, and uh, it cures cancers. It reduces all tumors by 70% in the first three weeks. Right? Chemotherapy and radioactive cancer treatments kill every cell in your body. It's the opposite. If you survive, you're fucking, you're extraordinarily lucky, and you're you're severely harmed. And you're destroyed, you're economically destroyed, you're socially destroyed, you're physically destroyed. Some people can recover, it's extraordinary rare. Everybody pays the ultimate price to liquidate all their assets for the nuclear industry and for the pharmaceutical, for the GMO industry. These are monsters. If you ate craft only, you will starve to death. Craft is all GMO. Not only that, it's got five carcinogens in it. So you will starve as you get cancer just from that. But you will starve to death if you don't eat anything else but uh, craft. It's like eating cardboard. There's no nutritional value in craft food whatsoever. Infant deaths up in BC, Canada after Fukushima collaborates a U.S. study, December 22nd, 2011. Peer review study showed 14,000 U.S. deaths from Fukushima. That was Dr. Janice Sherman, MD. Uh, shocking new evidence out that Fukushima disaster may have led to the deaths of as many as 14,000 people in America. And a lot of that had to do, of course, with the cesium-137 goes right into the heart and killed people. And also high doses of radiation. Uh, people that got that stuff could have easily died. I mean, there's hot spots in America from Fukushima that are unbelievable. But remember that your Geiger counter is only made to find bananas, only made to find the little stuff in rocks. That if you want to use it right, you got to get it calibrated. That there's thousands of different isotopes that you got to worry about. And so how do you, you can only use, if you calibrate your, you can find like gammas and betas, but you know what the hell it is. In order to find that, you got to go and spend tens of thousands of dollars on a Geiger counter just to find a single isotope. They've made it that difficult on purpose. And because of Fukushima, it's impossible to get your hands on that stuff. To actually work it out, you need a lab, you need scientists, you need volumes, you need a big organization, you need a mass of, but you need people you can trust. You can't trust a single soul out there. You, there's no transparency anywhere. Nobody's really trying to do the job. It's a constant disinformation campaign, a constant, and, and the rare people like myself, are attacked rootlessly, relentlessly, but nobody bothers trying to dissect it legitimately. I can do an hour stream and I could make a mistake or two. 
But that those little tiny mistakes are used to try to destroy me, and the rest of it is thrown away like it don't mean nothing. You know, I can sit here and read you a thousand articles. I'm pretty likely to screw up a couple of them. They will be taken to use to destroy me. The fact that I made a mistake. They won't be used in context. And he's certainly not going to mention the other 998 articles. They'll take two of them and use it to try to bludgeon me. And anybody that, listen, oh, look, he lied about this. Oh, you know. And people, good nature is the air, a lot of times don't understand what's going on and fall for it. So I understand that, though. That's the price I pay. I know I'm going to pay the price for what I'm doing. I don't, you know, we know that whoever makes the stand is the one that ends up making the price, right? I'm not the leader. I'm not a nuclear activist. I'm not an activist, okay? I'm a researcher. That's what I do. I research. Look at my site. I'm a researcher. I put a whole lot of time in each of my projects. As corny and stupid and insignificant as they are, I put all my heart and soul into it. I find every source that they're available, and I make my decision based upon the information, not upon conjectures and not upon mainstream media, but upon the science itself. And it's just something I really like doing flushing out the topic and now I understand the topic really well that's all I'm really doing here but yes you know I have passion for what I'm doing I'm committed to what I'm doing because I understand the gravity of it finally I get that you can't hide it no more once you collect enough the evidence is overwhelming that's what you're left with and so the solutions are you got to get out of the way because they're not going to tell you anything. The NRC came out and said there was no models that they know about in America. Their own government produced the cesium 137 It's a well-known model, right? The dispersions of the cesium 137 iodine-129. But you forgot about all the other isotopes, all the radioactive atoms, all the other information, the endless, endless from all the institutions around the planet that model it out. And that most of the models are only based upon Unit 1's releases for a short period of time for maybe two weeks. Nobody's got a model out there for the constant hemorrhaging, the constant leaking, the constant radiation escaping from all the broken rods all over the site, from all the aerosol. Nobody got models out there to cover all of that. You wouldn't be able to see the planet Earth in the model. It's a frightening, frightening thing. And we, But we can come at it as pretty darn good if we put nutrition back in our food, if we put DCA into our food, and you find links below about that. If you put cancer-killing agents in your food, if you got new the, the toxins out of your food, if you put nutrition back in your fucking food, I know it's a novel idea. I know it's like, Dana, oh, whoa, Dana, put nutrition back in your food. Dude, shut up. Why are you taking the nutrition out of your food? Why did they do that? I got the studies on that. I done a two-hour Monsanto video with 400 headlines and all the studies. You can't deny what Monsanto is. It's a mass murder machine. Gee, they chemtrailed Vietnam for nine years with Agent Orange. People say, "Oh, chemtrails don't exist." Go down, and tell that to Vietnam. Tell that to the three million kids there with no eyes, no nose, no mouths, no fingers, no hands. You paid for it with your tax dollars. Your rah rah rah. Your nationalism. Your patriotism. Go to a fucking football game and you're a patriot. Shut your fucking yaps. You insignificant maggots. You dummies. You retarded creatures that do that. It's not your fault. It is because you live that paradigm. You love it. You can't resist it. You know better. You're just a goof. You got your house filled up with toxic waste. The chemicals you're using in your clothing... They got no environmental human impact studies onto it. And the companies that are going to use them, the big companies, they're not going to do no environmental impact, impact studies to protect you. No, they're legal. That's why you're allowed to have 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette. Right? And who's, whose idea was that? Hey, I got a great idea. Let's put 4,000 chemicals in a fucking cigarette. Woohoo! Only a monster would think that one up. Right? So, well, you know, these people are not playing uh, fear, not playing rational. The EPA is not even rational. It grandfathered in every chemical, never bothered going back and trying to sort through it, right? Never said, oh, by the way, you know, this one's carcinogenic. We're going to have to take that out of children's food, take it out of their toys. Walmart got that covered. They get it out of China. There's no environmental protection agency modern. That shit comes right in your country, goes right into Walmart, 
Walmart displace, displaces all the moms and pops out of your community and you're left with toxic fucking shit. For cheap! That's why it's so cheap. They want you to buy it. They're giving it away to you. Cheap. You went into Walmart and you said, fuck, they're giving it away because it's toxic. Shouldn't be on the shelf. They're the clearing house for toxic stuff. China doesn't even have to uh, look for a buyer. Walmart will buy it all off them. They, they've been caught over and over dumping toys in the 45-gallon drums of formaldehydes. Unbelievable that you give your children. Because they look shiny. That's the world you live in. That's the end of the show. We'll say goodnight to everybody. Can't believe I just went a whole hour. <laughs> well, once again, we'll see you folks tomorrow morning. I'll be posting a video. We're going to be live in the backyard with some big hammers. <laughs> because uh, monsters are denying me my freedom. Okay, Albert. I ran a rail. Uh, let me jump over the page one second. Just before we say goodnight, I'll say goodbye to everybody. Say hi to a few people. Ten thumbs down, 69 thumbs up. That's really unusual. Whatever. Okay, Aviator, Irene Arell, Sergeant York. Yeah, I don't care, Teddy. My stream, man. I want to be trashy. That's what I'll do. Don't worry about it. Stand in foot. Ah, oh, Jesus. Awake, no. Delaney, Bob, Lori. Look, Mom, I'm playing. Toxic, Irina Real, Youngie, Jim Han, Gary, Kurtzer, Awake No, John Kick, uh, Stetson, 99, Heavy TL, 99, can't pronounce that one. Thank you, folks. John Kirk, uh, Aviator, Missing Sky, Just Passing Through, Kathy Reed, Aqua, Toxic, John Kloss, hey, John, Sydney, Tree, Mary, Sanders, uh, yeah, thanks, Albert, you're right. Thanks, Fuki, all, <laughs> Albert says. Uh, once again, folks, we'll catch you tomorrow morning, and it's an important stream to me. Please come out and support me. I'll be using, I'll have the emails below the video. I'll have all the telephone numbers. I need help, uh, I guess, finally. And they're doing it to a lot of other people. I'm going to break everything down tomorrow, more ways than one. It's going to be a good show, the live stream. The video comes up a couple hours before the show starts. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night and... Um, Tomorrow morning, and we'll catch you again tomorrow night. I'll be back again tomorrow night. After the show tomorrow morning, I'll go back to editing the movie for Fukushima. And then tomorrow night, I'll be back again tomorrow night. So it's be a rough day on me tomorrow. But I'm kind of looking forward to it. I want to get this past that point so I can get on with my videos, get on with the filmmaking, get on with the Fukushima fight, get on with awakening people, and finish the documentary so everybody can actually understand it, so everybody can really truly see the whole picture like I do. And I think that will change the game, right? I think everybody needs that. more than Well, I don't need it because I got it. That's why I'm doing all the work to get it out there. Because I realize it's power in me. I need to give it to you. I need to pass that baton on just in case, right? I'm targeted. And let's not take no chances and get that out there anyway. That's the way I see it anyway. We'll see you folks tomorrow morning around 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Take care, folks. Yank. Google and